Welcome to another parent teacher video lesson from the earlygiftedmanual.com, a free website for homeschooled children three to seven years old and their parents that promotes and develops giftedness at an early age. I am Gary Blank, the creator of that site and your host and facilitator for this video and all of the videos in my educational program. As the video lessons are designed to work in conjunction with the program on my website, I ask you to, at some point, click on the URL link in the description box below, and this action will take you to the earlygiftedmanual.com. By doing that, you will be able to put this lesson and all of the video lessons here on my channel in the proper context of the total program that I am presenting to you and your child. Welcome everyone to video lesson 40 and in this lesson uh, I will show you some techniques and uh, ways to teach your child uh, the concept of fractions and we will need this is a very hands-on lesson with so we will need uh, many varied materials so let me list those for you right now uh, to start out with uh, some counters and uh, your of course already familiar with these. These are the one inch uh, color tiles. I'm going to use green for this lesson. Um, graham crackers. So you want to go to the store and get these kind of graham crackers that have perforations that can be broken into halves and then fours and they end up looking kind of about this size here. Uh, copy paper, I don't think I have to show you that, and uh, I've made up some, also some small cards. Uh, I think I've, I took three by five uh, file cards and cut them in half, and I'll show you how we will use these shortly. Um, fraction circle and fraction square, I'm going to pull these into the, uh, the, the frame here for you to see. Uh, these are circles. I have, I have a set that has circles and squares. And just to go through through uh, these with you here quickly, this is a whole half. This one is thirds, fourths, and sixths and eighths. And there's also uh, uh, I'm trying to remember. I think tenths and uh, twelfths in this set. But we're just going to work with these. And like I said, there's uh, also squares in the set based on this piece. So those are called. Uh, uh, fraction circles and fraction squares. So let me push those out of the way. Pattern blocks. Uh, we will need one yellow hexagon, two red trapezoids, one, two, three blue rhombuses, uh, and I hope that's not rhombi, but I think it's rhombuses, and one, two, three, four, five, six, green triangles. So you will be needing those. Uh, what else is on my list here? A geo board, which looks like this. This is a seven by seven geo board with a circle uh, uh, pegs on one side. And over here, there's a more of a square and rectangular grid. And of course, uh, you will need various rubber bands uh, as we work with this. And finally, um, a ruler with half inch gradations, I think will work just fine. This is like a beginner's ruler. So those are the materials you will need for this lesson in fractions. So let's perhaps start out with a working definition of fraction. What in fact is a fraction? Well, uh, I'm going to throw this one out for you, and then, uh, and then we'll, we'll kind of work with some manipulatives to expand on this definition. And the definition I like to use is uh, a fraction is one or more of equal parts of a whole. Well, what does that mean? Well, we're going to uh, work on that right now. So let's start out with some of the most basic concepts of, of fractions. And I think what we'll do uh, for starters is we'll divide a group of objects 
in what we call halves. So there'll be some new vocabulary for your child. Half, halves, and of course we'll get into some other uh, fraction naming in just a minute, but we'll start out with halves. So let's, let's say these green counters are going to stand for children or kids, however you want to, to say it. And let's say I know that there are, let's see, four, five, six, seven, ten here. And these ten kids want to get a basketball game going. Uh, these are boys and girls. So let's say one boy stands over here. One boy stands over here, and they're going to pick teams. And uh, they don't know these kids, so we won't get into you know the cruelty of uh, picking teams uh, and, and being picked last. We don't want to go there. So let's say this is just a group of kids that really don't know each other. All right. So um, this person here, let's, let's say it's a boy. He's going to pick somebody. And then she's going to pick this person, he's going to pick somebody, she's going to pick somebody, he's going to pick somebody, she's going to pick somebody, and they go over by her and her group. And as you can see, on and on, he picks, the person goes over to his group, she picks. Okay, so what do we have now? Well, what we have is uh, a group of kids who have now been divided in half. So each one rec represents one half. And let's check just to be sure that these teams are in fact equal. We have, of course, putting them in a, in a line is always a great strategy for counting. So on this team we have one, two, three, four, five children. This team, we have one, two, three, four, five children. Let the basketball game begin. So that's one example. Uh, let me move these out of the way, and we'll do one more here together. Let's say uh, we have some uh, one, two, three, four, five, six graham crackers, and uh, two hungry kids, and you're the mom or the dad, whatever, and you are going to divide them up. So you say one for you, 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 and one for you. So that's fair, right? We've divided the six uh, uh, graham crackers into two equal groups, so each kid gets the same amount. And let's check to be sure. One, two, three for that kid. One, two, three for that kid. So as you can see, um, dividing into halves is very straightforward. It's kind of a one for you and one for you kind of, uh, kind of thing. And kids can get mixed up sometimes in their counting, so you'll have to, to watch that. Sometimes they, they go to the same pile or whatever twice in a row, but uh, you have to make it clear to them that they have to alternate between piles. And now, um, before we uh, move on, there's always this issue, which you should explain to your child right now. What if we have seven? I think you know what's going to happen, but your child will not until they actually see it. So here we go. One for you, one for you, one for you, and one for you. One for you, and one for you, and one for you. Uh-oh, this person's getting more than this person. <laughs> and as you know, as an adult, uh, you can't always divide things up equally. So, you know, maybe the, your, your child will say, well, let's crack this one in half. Or usually, as you know, as a parent, the best thing is to say, well, I'm taking this one. And you either eat it or hide it. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm digressing here. Sometimes you will get what we call a remainder, and of course, as, as uh, your child goes into division, uh, he or she will learn all about remainders. And now let's explore the concept of dividing a whole object, object into halves. And 
This is just a very convenient way to do it. These wonderful graham crackers that break into halves and then fourths. So this is going to be a very simple lesson. Uh, you just show your child, look at this, I can take this one whole graham cracker and break it up into halves just like this. And now we have two equal pieces. This is one half of a graham cracker. This is the other half. And maybe it's a good time now to uh, write this out so your child gets an idea of what it, what it looks like written down since, you know, at this point, your child is working with numbers. And I'm going to do this. And there you go. What, what does this mean? Well, uh, there's a line going across, and below the line there is a number, and above a line, uh, the line there is a number, and what do these numbers mean? Well, the bottom number is called the denominator, and as an adult, uh, of course, it's good for you to know that, and, and I suppose it is for your child, too. It might take a while for, the, for them to remember those names, but uh, denominator, and that, too, tells you that there, in the whole, there are two pieces. They've been broken up into two pieces, the whole, so that's what this number tells you. And this number above the line shows what this part represents. This is one half. This is one half a graham cracker. So that's a great way to introduce your child to uh, how we write fractions. The line across, what the number below the line means, what the number above the line le uh, uh, means. Uh, and of course, uh, with these graham crackers, what's nice about them, and I'll move these out of the way here right now, is uh, look at this. You can divide them again. <laughs> and now we have four equal pieces. So here we go. One fourth and one fourth. And you can go through the same explanation again to your child. Uh, there's a line there. The lower number, the denominator tells us how many uh, pieces the whole has been broken into. One, two, three, four. Equal pieces, of course. And this number represents this. One part of these four equal pieces, and we call that one-fourth. So uh, we've, we've worked with halves and fours. Let's see, what else could we do? You might have a situation like this where uh, you might want to, to uh, just, you know, single out or divide these up like this. And, and there you go. It's as simple as that. All right, bottom number tells us the total number of equal pieces in the whole, one, two, three, four. This quantity here, this number here represents this part of the whole, three pieces out of four pieces. And of course, uh, this is read three quarters, and this, of course, is uh, read one quarter. So um, a very good way to uh, to show your child uh, what fractions are all about and, and how they're written out and they will be able to clearly understand what these numbers mean by using these various uh, manipulatives. And I think the last thing I can say about this is we've, we've, named, we've named these uh, fractions and what your child needs to know is this bottom number, the denominator, uh, is always uh, spoken like an ordinal number. So we have fourths, and we know fourth is an ordinal number. And uh, here's an exception. There's only a couple of exceptions. I mean, we could have thirds. We could divide things three ways. Uh, fifths, we could divide things five ways. Uh, 
We don't have one second. We have halves, so that's the exception there. Uh, and you have to point that out, half or halves. And this denominator, quarter, let's use this one, one quarter, uh, is not an exception, but another way to say one fourth. So be sure you point that out to your child, and these are the only two exceptions, and everything else is simply an ordinal number with a s on the end. Thirds, fourths, ninths, 286, <laughs> you get the idea.